All right, welcome to another episode of BDQ Live. I am Code Dameron, and uh, we're going to play a couple of games. I hope that this stream is all right. My uh, stream health isn't perfect right now. I don't quite know what that means, but we're just going to roll with this for now. I'm going to put that over there. All right, so today we're going to play a deck um, that was suggested to me by, co by uh, my co-host, uh, Cure Mode suggested we play Banefully Brass Han. Um, he said that this deck is really interesting because it has a lot of interesting tools that almost work together. So you have things like Sound the Horn and Arise, where you can mill your deck and then get a really strong Arise off. But then you have the other half of that, which is, um, well, you have Library of the Damned to work with that too, to also hold on to these cards while you're sounding the horns, but also you have Screaming Cave, which puts all the cards back and makes your Arise weaker. and makes your sound the horns also probably weaker. Having only three uh, Brobnar guys means that we're going to be milling a lot of our cards whenever we play sound the horns, which is kind of a fine thing. I think it's a good thing in this deck. Also, look at all of these um, artifacts in Brobnar. We have two Omnis and this one, which is a passive effect which is not going to be great but is this going to be a support house i think i think this is a support brobner house on the other side we have shadow cells we have two of them and that's really interesting with all these fight effects like snudge and i guess we have the the collar of subordination we have the sting he said that this deck is going to make a lot of board, st board states that make me make choices and I love making choices. I love puzzling out a board state. I think Snudge is going to be a star. I think the double Snudge fighting into somebody bigger than him, the damage going on to Shadow Self, and then Snudge bouncing something, that's going to be a big play that we're going to do a lot. Um, yeah, he said to play this deck. I think we're going to get some interesting results. Let's roll with it. My Rados. Okay, here we go. Banefully Brass Han. Going casual because he also thinks this is going to be like a tier 1.5 deck, which is like, you know, an okay deck. Con Grim Von Vom Mond. Things I see. Dimension Door means don't let him have a Logos board. My internet is weird right now. Okay. Okay, stream health is better. Anyway, don't let him have a Logos board. Wormholes and access and phase shift. He's going to do the thing. No Neftine seed, but yeah, his uh, deck is going to be mean. No bait and switch. No large amber affecting plays on really either side. So this is going to be interesting. There is the Miasma. We both have a Miasma. And the Obelette. Poison Wave might be big. Magda the Rat's going to be annoying. But we're both allowed to reap as big as we want, really. You too. Okay. Do I want to keep this? Yeah, I see a Shadow Self I keep. I think Shadow Self is a great turn one card. Um, Is there a better play there? Oh, look. Silent Dagger lets Shadow Self do damage. That's kind of cute. If he plays a four health untamed guy, maybe I go Shadow Self, Silent Dagger, Miasma. Ooh, you know what? Snudge with that. No, we're almost certainly going um. Dis next turn. Steal his guy. Yeah, like, I'll take that Dew Fairy off of your hands. I don't mind having it. I won't be able to use it, but neither will you. I guess. That might be fine. Yeah. All right, so... Let's see, what else is he doing? Life Web? Okay, he played two cards. He had probably two, two, and two. Kind of a sad hand. Let's get value play all my cards uh, we're gonna play snudge on the right and then we're going to collar the dew fairy to the right because I want shadow self to be protecting my guys this dew fairy actually has no value for me and it also has elusive inherently so I don't mind not protecting it with shadow self I'd much rather protect the toxin or the pit demon yeah my dis turns look great I really think Collar of Subordination is a fantastic design card. It's kind of a thing that is only, it only has this sort of effect in 
Keyforge. So, Call of Subordination says that you control the creature, but it doesn't give you any house matching. So, mostly any game that lets you just take a creature and control it is a huge card. I remember Yu-Gi-Oh! Snatch Steel was... Uh, Change of Heart was control it for a turn. That's super banned. Brain Control is conditional control. That's also very strong. Um, cards like Magic... There are so many steel cards, but they're all very high costing and mostly blue. Stealing a guy is often very strong, and this is just a base set. It is a rare, but it's very conditional. It doesn't really do a whole lot. What was his turn? Because I wouldn't be able to use the Dew Fairy. So he killed my Dew Fairy, his own Dew Fairy. Another reason not to put it next to the Shadow Self, I guess. It doesn't take all that damage from Poison Wave. Three damage to everyone not on a flank. So we want to make our flanks not super big. Oh well. How do we how do we organize our board so Shadow Self doesn't die to long fused mines? Well, if we keep it on the side, then it wouldn't die. Oh, no, we just nudge it back to his hand, so we can't use it. He'll get the amber again. I'm a little bit upset about that. But my hand is too good not to just make that play, right? Yeah, my hand is just that good right now. So we reap here, get rid of your card, play Toxin on the right, on the left, protected by the Shadow Self. Pit Demon will bump in if Toxin dies, I guess. And we're going to library the punch because I want to, if I declare Shadows, I want to play two cards and reap. And if I declare, if I had drawn more sh Shadow cards, it would have been more valuable. So. I put the, um, in cards plus board terms, I wanted to archive the the lowest number of cards plus board. So cards plus board, the highest number, I play it. I add, what, two and a library? I guess four discards versus two and three, uh, three and two. Sorry if I'm just spouting off numbers here, but basically I wanted to play Shadows the most, so I archive all the Brobnar cards, so it becomes a burst, a burstier turn. Even though looking at my deck, Brobnar doesn't seem like a burst house. That just seems like more of the way I'm drawing it. Excuse me. Okay. Wormhole for Bear, play Dexter, play you. Oh, he's going to take my Snudge? I should have taken my Snudge, man. He's much better than Pit Demon. And look, taking control. Another card that just takes control less efficiently. Okay, so... Oh, double Snudge. Gets the Mind Lock. So, I could... play... Brobnar here. Brobnar here is a great play. You draw the most cards... But I think I get the most value out of this because this is going to do two things. This is going to get me an extra card out of my hand. This is going to get value. And I want my Pit Demon back. So yeah, I'm going to ask him more questions. So watch, my archive is going to get a little bit better. We'll put Bumpsy away. Why not? Slightly more conditional than the troll. I want to fight into the Mind Lock. I want to put you back where you go. I'm going to bounce with Snudge to Ancient Bear. Lots of value. I'm going to reap with you. Maybe I was supposed to reap first, because I don't really ca care about discarding his Ancient Bear. And then I will action to steal. Wow. All right, so I'm asking him questions now. I'm saying, can you stop my disboard? Because I'm not afraid to just use it over and over and take away your board. He he's, doesn't have the right answers. The double snudge is terrifying. You have to kill them with the vents. And not a lot of events do more than four damage. And the shadow self... Wow. The shadow self's protecting them. So... The reason snudge is so strong in this board spot, board position is that he needs direct removal to kill them. Any... Oh, artifact. That's an artifact. That's a real artifact. But any artifact he plays is going to get bounced back to his hand. Any creature he's going to play is going to get bounced back to his hand. But now Speed Sigil changes the map. 
Okay, so Magda the Rat comes down. If he's if he's playing it like I would, I would fight into my second snudge. I would fight right here with this Magda. Ignore the fact that he steals because he's not valuable enough. Nope. He's just going to reap. Yeah, I don't think that's worthwhile. I'm going to make your Magda sad. Mm. You know. The speed sigil changes everything. So now me playing guys is more valuable than it would be inherently. Like this Umber can actually get value directly now. And that's really strong. And I think that's the play here. I think Miasma gets value. I think a Silent Dagger onto Shadow Self to kill Magda. Maybe Silent Dagger onto this Snudge. I'm gonna draw more cards. It's definitely Shadows. I think the Shadows turn is good here. This would mill most of my deck. Because I've already drawn two Brobnar cards. Okay, we're going to try to draw more discards, I think. Try, try to draw a Rise. Then mill our deck. That's the new plan. Okay. I want to kill Magda. I already get Miasma. No, we will... Uh... No, we'll get him under Miasma this turn. Don't take Archive. Play Umber to the right. We're going to get Miasma. And we're going to fight here. So he doesn't need to lose any more Amber right now. This can go somewhere more survivable if I want it to. No, I want to keep his board small. Reap, kill. Yeah, I think there's a pro play in there where I put Silent Dagger on Snudge because of the safety of Miasma. But I think that's a little bit greedy. I don't remember if he had a lot of direct kill in his deck. I was looking at Amber Tools and I wasn't looking at Kill. Okay, so I'm not going to look. I'll, I'll remind everyone at home. But uh, I'm not looking at this right now. If he has Direct Kill, I would care. Um, don't tell me. Oh, look, someone's watching. So today I actually set up a, uh, a bunch of reminders to get people watching. Um, whoever is here, I still don't know. But uh, if you could tell me my audio levels are all right. I don't have music on today. I'm trying... No music because I'm having a little bit, tr bit of trouble understanding copyright IDs. It's a little bit annoying, but we're working through it. It'll be fine. But no music is fine. I kind of wish I had the music. You know what? Yeah, we're just going to keep it no music today. Even though I kind of want it. I want to understand the copyright thing. Maybe I'll do some tests on a, on some private videos. To make sure I don't get hit with copyright IDs. I just don't want to get in trouble. Anyway. Speed Sigil comes down. Changes the game. That means all your tools work right away. Like Quixo. Normally Snudges would bounce him right back to hand. But now we can come kill Umber right away. Oh. Dimension Door. Remember what I said? Don't let him have a Logos board? It doesn't really count as a Logos board. That's your turn? Come on, man. You can do better than that. Now I just punish him, right? Now I just take his whole board away. So here come shadows. Don't take the thing. Shadow self comes and protects the Umbra. Is ready. Silvertooth comes in ready. We're not going to play this because we're going to kill his board instead. We reap here. We kill here. We fight here. We steal. We reap. We reap. We play lights out for the amber, because I don't think I need the removal with the double snudge. Okay. I want to draw a rise. I still want to draw a rise. But we haven't found it. But like look at our board. You can't touch it. What is he gonna do? I have no I have no idea what his plan is. I haven't even declared Brobner this game yet, have I? But the Library of the Damned was really helping get it back into my hand. Mm. I really need to bounce this speed sigil. Now that I have Tentacus, I feel better about it. Oh my goodness, look at this, Tentacus. Tentacus double snudge is gross. What is he going to do? 
It was really unfortunate for him. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I think this is in the bag. He really has to have a board wipe. My board is so far ahead. I have no need to play Brobnar because my board is fine. What's he fighting? What did he fight? What did he fight? Shadow Self? Pit Demon? I don't think that's right. He Stop losing your guys. Pit Demon isn't even scary to you. You're not at six. He, he can't steal from you. He can't steal the key. Oof. Man. This is unfortunate. Save the pack. Oh, save the pack. Okay. You did something. You killed a shadow self. And key charge. You discarded key charge. That's too bad. Okay, we're going dis. Not taking all our cards yet. We are playing Tentacus on the left. We are... Library for Sound the Horns? Put a for Troll. Why not? It could be my Mighty Javelin. At this point, I'm just trying to put cards in here that are all the same color. Um, We will... We definitely reap here, bounce the Seeker Needle. We reap here. I want to leave him with his artifacts, actually. Oh, oops. Se sequencing. Incorrect sequencing. Because I wanted to get rid of I wanted to keep him with that because of the Tentacus. Um, do I want to leave him with the Speed Sigil? No. I don't care about his guy as much. I don't know. That might. I think. The, I think they were wrong choices in that turn. I think leaving the secret needle was probably fine. I'm not threatened by it. I think I bounced the speed sigil on the ancient bear. And then toxin first. But really, I'm just. I feel so far ahead. I might not be, but from my memory, I only had that one look at the deck. He has no effervescent principle or. Um, did he have interdimensional graft? I think he might have had that one. But he had no big way to steal all my amber. Look, he's gonna capture one. Okay. I'm gonna put those all back in your hand, man. You're not gonna be happy about it. At least he's drawing cards. No, he's. Mm. This draws two thirds of a card. Not a good turn. Okay. So if we play Brobna, we get one, two, three amber. That's not that doesn't get me to six. I want to get the six today. I can't. I can steal one. I don't need to stop him. There's nothing I need to do. All right. I guess we just keep snudging him. <laughs> I mean, right? Oh, I can get to six. One, two, three, four, five. Make him lose the smoko. Okay, that's fine. He also draws two cards. Don't take. All right, so we fight to steal. Take his guy. Play Ghostly Hand because it's two amber. And I want it to be at six. And draw two cards, I guess. Okay, there's a rise. Okay, let's see if we can get a silly playoff. I mean, we're probably... We could just win here. He could just have no more steal. Come on, play a Dex, Play another Dexter. This is a rough match. You know what? I kind of want the music. Audio levels. I like that so It makes me feel so much better. I just kind of play it. Alright, I'm, I'm, I'm still trying to figure out the, uh... He played Untamed? Come on, man, I don't think you have a Murmuk in there. It means I'm definitely gonna win. Right? The only key denial... Oh, yeah, good game. Too bad. I'm looking back at this deck. What did he have? No Murmuk. No interdimensional graft access. Alright, there were just cards in here. I don't think there were tools in here. He just had kind of cards in his deck. 
Congratulations. Very formal. Okay. Let's do a competitive game. Um, okay. Start that. We're going to X out this guy's deck. Give him a high. Start the game. Look at this deck. That's my deck. Look at his deck. You guys see this, right? Yeah. We're in competitive now. Look at all the dudes. Eight of them? Flame fists? I wouldn't remember that if I didn't look at that. So that's the thing that I get off the... Looking at this instead of the card. Control the weak. I'm going to lose to control the weak, aren't I? Hysteria is going to be interesting. Ugh, I've lost to Drumble Hysteria before. It's not fun. Drumble Hysteria Terror. Wait a second. Okay, no, this isn't my friend. Like, this is my friend. He's been going 4-0 a bunch with a deck with Hysteria, Drumble, the Terror, and I lost to that combo. It was very annoying. I think it was similar to this comp. Look at all the bodies. Okay, we're going to see how this goes. What do I have? Interesting turn one hand. I could aggressively mulligan for the... I'm gonna keep this hand. I think Snudge is a really good turn one play. In my head it was like, what if I find the Shadow Self? I think that's the best turn one play here for a lot of the deck. But I think Snudge is a really good turn one with a dis hand to follow it up. Yeah, this hand to follow it up is very strong. Is that like capping my audio? There we go. Okay. Yeah, look, so the terror is very good, but I can bounce both of his guys. That feels great. So we, if I bounce the, t if I fight here and then bounce the terror, I don't gain any amber and he wrecks me. But what I can do is I can say shadow. Yeah, okay, we're gonna. We're, this is a cute play. I don't want him to talk to me. So we're gonna get rid of his guys and make my Snudge scary. Now we're back at turn one. He's already represented that he can't kill the Snudge with the cards he had before. We're going to see if he can kill it with a dagger. Now this guy kills two or three things at a time. I wish I had a Shadow Self. But. Okay, punch the tremor. That's ter tremor's pretty good. How did how did I die? How did I die? Dang your cheek. That's too bad. Okay. Um, I think we're just going for value here. I think I just want to do card flip board. Go away. A little bit of a waste. Too bad. All right, I have a good next hand. I see four purple cards. I'm gonna get a drink. I'll be right. I think that this is a little bit unforgiving. This um. The, uh, the client's a little bit unforgiving with misplays, but uh, the manual mode is very nice, having that option. Okay, look at all of your guys now. Okay, now you have more guys now. So, I think if I play out Toxin Tentacus Snudge Library, something's gonna kill the Snudge. I might even get Toxin. But we're about to be very mean to each other. I want to save Toxin and Snudge the most. So I'm going to put them on the edge in case I draw a shadow self, which I probably will. I have two. You're going to play a bunch of discards, I'm going to play a bunch of discards. So I've got a... I've got a strong disc turn and a mediocre 
Robin returns at the same time. Hello. How are you? Hi. Yeah? Daisy says hi. No, I'm not careful. Alright, that works. That works, I guess. Go ahead. Okay, what happened? What's going on today? He played up three guys? Ugh. John Smith. Mega Mouth. Okay, Value Town. Did he respond to my banter? More banter. Okay, so maybe I was wrong for playing the Earth Shaker. Like, if I had paid more attention to his deck, I know he has three toxins, but I like saw a bunch of Mars guys, but I didn't really put together those were all the Mars guys. Hmm. That planet ray gun is also pretty good. Excuse me. I think most of the value is in this. I played this. I think I reap with the toxin because that's his job. Get rid of fear. to do I want a library of the damn the urchin because that's like the value play as was it it sounds funny I used to lie out on the beach close my eyes may there be a pretty girl lying in the sand next to me 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 sorry let me just get my screen link this, put it there. All right, Draven. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, this was uh, a big thread today. Um, someone on Reddit like called me out for like not called me out but like really praised the podcast today. Um, oh, that's super nice. Okay, what do I want to do? I think I want to kill his value. I think Toxin has a lot of value. I think I don't think I've got a good way to ch kill John Smith. That's sitting in my hand. That's punch. We're gonna punch John Smith real soon. Unless I just roll about more value. So we can snudge away Zizix. Or the terror. Or the bobble. Ooh. Okay. I think we fight Toxin and get the bobble. That takes care of his this turn. Then we take care of the Mega Mouth. Then this turn is less scary. I'm looking at the amber. Reaping here would only bring me to five. So yeah, I think I've got to. I think I've got to get my value. I don't want toxin. He reaps for too much value. And I don't want the mega mouth. He reaps for too much value. Yeah. All right. How have I been streaming for half an hour already? You know what? The music makes it go a lot faster. The music was a good choice. So, I think that was a strong play. I think that was a good turn. I think it ended well. Everything looks kind of nice now. It's not super stacked on top of each other. I think I've given him a lot of things to think about. None of his guys, except for the Terror, fight very efficiently into my board. I think killing the Toxin was incredibly strong because... Killing the snudge got me the 
Toxin, which gets a card. Let's see. Hold on. Toxin gets me a card. Toxin for Amber. Card. And then the gun. Gun on Toxin was a cool play. Yeah, look. Now he has to go dis and get one fight. Do it in the snudge. Fight in the snudge. Don't reap for anything. Yeah, this was a this was a that was a good turn. Now we're gonna start punching things. We're going to punch it has to be John Smith. Yep. Terrified Snudge gets no amber today. We're going to get a bunch of amber. And I'm not happy about these double toxins, but like we're both playing the double toxin game, so we're both being kind of mean. We're going to sting him. I've never really played this card. This is on my list of cards that change the game in like the way it works. I, I don't really know what the implications of playing Sting is. Okay, so we're gonna play Brobnar. We have too many Brobnar cards in hand. No. This, takes, this hits the board. This hits the board. Now we have choices. This hits the board on the right. That's easy. Oh, oh, he gave me money. Aw, he gave me money for the bobble. Look, that's even better for Snudge. Snudge, you are an MVP. What a good card. What a good card in this deck, and what a good card. Okay, we have two more choices to make. I'm stalling. Reaping gets me to six. Is John Smith scary? Currently, if I kill a Toxin, then his board is... Currently, his board is 4-2-2. But he probably doesn't have any many discards. I want... I don't think this game is about racing. I think mean, this game is about board position, so. I think we kill these guys. I'm very afraid of John Smith, and punch, like, the reason you punch John Smith is because he has a lease. And there's no, you, like, that's the best way to get rid of this guy. I never want to have to fight for him. So I play punch. Whether or not I want to kill Toxin or two Toxins, I have Punch and Mighty Javelin for cards like that. I guess this one is good for later. Also, I do this Iron Obelisk thing, which isn't relevant yet, but and it probably is rarely relevant in this deck. Oh, oh look, it was right! Oh, instant gratification. He reaped right away. He puts Drumble away. Okay, so we're saving Mighty Javelin for Drumble. I don't remember what else is in his deck. Whoa, 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 where'd his board go? Total recall? He had Toxin, two Probnars, Ganger Chieftain. Okay, he's gonna fight a thing with Ganger Chieftain. He has the Terror, so I shouldn't. Whoa, Amber? Whoa, whoa, where'd you get all that Amber? I have the sting though. I have the sting. Oh, he purged. Wow. Wow, this is a big play that I have never considered before. I want to take a moment to talk about this. This got him like five or six amber, and this got him another five. Oh my god. Okay, I think I have to do some mean shadow things. I think I've gotta play this thing. I think we play you on the right. Like, play all of your value now. Uh, you can't fight. Reap. We have to hold for the drumble. Hold this javelin for jumble. Javelin is for jumble. Play the sting. Play ghostly hand. I think you've got to hold me as one. I don't think I have enough steel tools in this deck to combat his amber pool. Is that right? And I want to get value off the sting.
Well, like, he's gonna race. Which means I have to hold the miasma. Yeah, so... He's going to be playing... He's going to be making keys. I don't think he had any big steel cards. No Shadow Storm. He had the two Brobnar dudes that... Yep, that, that's the one. Lumiere Flame Fist. Smith. Okay, that's not scary. Okay. Now, do we sting a second time? I don't think so. I don't think we need to sting twice. No, we need to start forging. We need to start forging. And the shadows... Like, I have a board. I don't need to get to a billion amber. Do I need to miasma him? If I play miasma, he plays drumble, doesn't he? Um. Yeah. I need to play this miasma. That's too bad. Ask me if I want to move javelin. No. Or yes. Oh, okay. He's gonna do more Brobner things. More flame fist value. That's fine with me. Okay. forging at seven. Now he's forging at more than seven. Ooh, I don't think he realizes what he just did with the, with the iron obelisk. That's a tricky play to, to notice. Fist fights Pit Demon and dies. So it's Pit Demon. He doesn't want me to steal. I have more ammo. I'm, I'm sitting on 18 ammo. So I'm sitting at win condition. I think we play... Huh. So... This creature's double snudge for a rise feels really good. So at this point we are... Yeah, we're gonna play a rise. In the library. Yeah. We're gonna make him really sad. Because... I have enough amber to win. I don't need to be reaping, but I can be. He also put so much work into killing these guys. Too bad. Where are my shadow cells? Sound the horns is a strange card right now. It mills the rest of my deck. So you've already seen all three... ...this creature. All uh, three Brobnar creatures. Library for the Nexus, because it's the off-color card. Reap. 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 Kill a guy. He's gonna play this. I don't know who this that is at my door. There's misspells, there's misspells in there, but that's fine. Okay, am I done with things? Did I do all my cards? It's asking if I want to use the javelin? No. End the turn. 
Play Hysteria. What's he gonna do with it? Oh, I toxined his Hysteria. I, uh, that's so mean. I think, I think I played this deck very well. I think I played the Snudges really good early game and I was always a step ahead of his options. And honestly, MVP was probably the Sting. The Sting got me a lot of Amber. Wait, where's my key? I have to forge two keys. Fire Spitter wrecks my board. I lose both snudges. I forge key. I declare whatever. Can't even steal. Play cards? Um, I mean, I like having him at two. I guess we play cards. Fight, I guess. Get rid of his guys. Play this. Lose the value on this. Um, play anger. I mean, whatever. Do I care? Um. Okay. Yeah. Let's take his guy. Then we discard the rest of our deck? Sure. Got rid of everything. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, and watch, watch. Okay, if anyone doesn't know we can do this, you can, if you have a ready and fight effect like Anger or Gauntlet, and they have no board, you ready, and he's not allowed to fight. So he just stays ready and you re put them again. Very cool effect. Ask me if I want to use Javelin. No, thank you. I'm at 12? Where does Amber come from? There's the Drumble. There's the Succubus. I sound the horns again. And Relentless Whispers? You know what? Um... I could do cute things where I make this guy sweat, but the reason that we have the cards is to play them, right? So we play this, we Mighty Javelin, we do not take archives, we Mighty Javelin for the Drumble. Said I'd do it. Succubus. Oh, oops, that was not the right button. That didn't do anything. I was supposed to kill Succubus. Um, let's archive this. And then let's do Screaming Cave because I don't know. It's a cool card.
All right. Let's play another game. learning about my deck. Now that I'm playing it more, I think that Brobnar is the burst house. I think there's a lot of really cool cards in this deck, in this, in this, um, house that are, they build up and I don't mind not playing them. One of the things that Care Mode said was that the Brobnar side tends to clog up the deck, and I don't dis, I don't agree with that. I think that Yes, the Dis and Shadows cards are more valuable, and I'd rather be drawing them, but instead of clogging up the Brobner hands, it just makes them more efficient, because I have... Really, I've been drawing the Library of the Damned nicely to get rid of the off-color faction. Honestly, looking at this deck, I don't think I would... I should have been giving... Or I, if I had just looked at the deck and not played it, I wouldn't give it as much credit as it deserves. This deck is doing very, very well because there's a lot of really strong value cards in here. Look at the Snudges, look at the Lights Out, look at the Relentless Whispers. A lot of these cards are doing two or three things at a time. The Gauntlets are, are incredibly efficient on these off turns. Ooh, let's start. Conticali. Oh, Spanish, Italian. Oh, this is gonna be not fun. Just hold a weak lash, bobble, wipe the board. Only three fates for, for wiping though. But the succubus, toxin, let's see if he can protect it. No. I see no shadow self. Oh boy, four niphilates and a queen. And no. But a bunch of untamed guys, but none of them are value except for Flaxia. I think I'm going to win this game because Untamed is just going to be trash. She's going to save the pack, which is going to be good on all my shadows, guys. I'm going to be trying to, like, fight. I'll do a thing where I fight a Nifilate with the Snudge. I'll bounce the important guy. And then, um, I get saved in the pack later on my Snudge that took damage in the Shadow Salts. What do I see? Um, I don't like this little turn one hand up on instinct because I don't see any turn one turn two plays and I don't see any protection. I see an arise too early. There you go. Hmm. Okay. We go so this is this is exactly what I was talking about in the episode of the podcast where I say, would I rather play a dominator or three untamed guys? There's two really good plays here turn one. You play Toxin turn one, and then Toxin Lash turn two to get the extra reef off of this. But I would much rather play the Shadow Self. And then play... Actually, this is a little bit easier of a question because I was going first. I can only play one card anyway. But playing the Shadow Self first lets me get value out of the rest of everything. So let's go play you on the left. I think I want to protect the, the Snudge because I love Snudge. Statue over here. Play this down here. Get Succubus. Very sad. Very, very bad Succubus. Oh! Earthshaker is an interesting card here. Do I want to lose my own toxins? Uh, oh, I have a rise. Hmm. I have anger to ready him. Okay, let's see if he plays another guy. I'm not gonna buzz that. I didn't either. Did not buzz that. Dust runner. Stop. Killing my own toxin. Something is easy for me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Make it easier for me. You're gonna lose all your guys. I'm not gonna be sad about it. I would gladly lose one toxin. Come on, keep showing it to me. That's it. Two 
bad for you. Um, now, pop quiz, do you play it on this side or on this side? If you play on this side, it slides into the shadow self. I don't want to do that because one, he's big enough that I'm fine with it and taking damage. And two, I want to take damage because I've got iron pebbles in the deck. It says, I want to have damage brought on here. Ready and fight. Can't fight? Might as well reap. Thank God. I am solidly ahead with two amber and five cards versus his zero. But I've gotten a purge toxin that's relevant because of a rise? Come on, man. Not cool. Oh, look. What a cute turn. Lost in the woods. Getting these two? Don't put him away. Oh, that was wrong. Now I get to use him again. You gotta play it back. Don't want to use him. Vicar. Discard save the pack. Against a shadow self. Okay. We want to play Relentless Whispers to steal from him. I think we're going to do it on the Silver Tooth. So we have to stack my board correctly. Sequencing matters today. I want to protect the Urchin. I want to not protect the Silver Tooth. I want to reap with the Silver Tooth. I want to relentlessly whisper the Silver Tooth. I want to protect the Nexus. And I want to play the Shadow Self to protect it. And then I reap. Extra value. Steal with Urchin, steal with Whispers. I am doing a lot of work this game. What a weird disc. I need my board to get wiped. He has three fates would be really good to play here. Kill Shadow Self, Shadow Self Nexus. Come on, play three fates. Play this, play three fates. Step one, okay. Play this, play a ride. Succubus and Toxin, that's not very nice. Shafels is... I hate this card. This card has so much value. It is hard to protect, but once you get it out there, it's just very difficult to get off the board. And in it, it's support, it's just... Hmm. I really don't want to play a rise because I've been screwed. I mean, because I've got nothing to arise. So I think toxin. Should I? Huh. Nexus fights Shafels. Because Nexus doesn't need to reap. Lights out gets these two. Yeah. Because I don't want to get Succubus, I don't want to get Toxin, that's what this does. It plays all the cards you don't want to deal with. And then we just make more Amber. Kill my board, sir. Asking you questions. Can you answer them? Currently the answer is no. You were supposed to play three fates. And then I was going to get a really good Arise, but that's fine. We're, we're fine. Maybe I just don't play Arise? Like, do I play Arise for just Toxin? I think that's worth it. I think Arise for a guy is fine. Too bad. He tried to kill the Urchin, and he couldn't. But he stole- okay, so he played- okay, interesting. So he said, ah, I have to stop him from forging. He's got too big of a turn. I have to make sure that Nerve Blast stops him from forging. But he didn't grow his board as well. Which means I just get to keep doing it. Um, if I had an Amber on any of these discards, I would play this. But I don't. So you're going to play Shadow. You're going to get rid of his ape? Nope, we don't even care. We're going to reap four. I'm still asking you the same question. Can you deal with my board? The answer's been no. Nerve Blast did not grow him his board enough to make that play worth it. He should have played down those three cards. That's a much better turn. Too bad. Because I 
am gonna get hurt by these guys? Oh, I forged another key? Oh, gross. So if I reap four, now he has an answer because he goes Lash, Toxin, Succubus. I'm still ahead, he doesn't actually hurt my board, but he, ha he would have to do that because... Oh, do I make him... I could hypothetically force him to declare this here. Nah, he's got shadow cards. Also, I want to play my cards. Because my cards are cool. There's a Snudge. He's pretty cool. Here's a Tent for Kiss. He's pretty cool. Here's a Rise for Disc for my Toxin. You purge the other one, sir. But look, I get to play five cards. You didn't get to play five cards. Why'd I... Oh, I guess Succubus, Succubus plus a Rise means minus two cards. But now, you don't have a good answer to my board. Ooh, my disc turn looks great now. It took me a turn off from pressure, because I could have raped four. But I didn't. And that's fine. Check, check, check. Is my, is my mic really low? I hope it's not. Check, 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 check. We'll see. I think I'm doing this alright. Oh look, someone else is watching me. The other guy's here. Oh look, it's the guy. Who's that? That might be just Xavier. Mike could be louder. I know Mike could be louder. I got that comment the other day. Check, check, check. See, now it's just very loud. Check, check. Oh, this could be louder like this. I don't know when that happened. I don't have a timestamp on this. Oh, I can put you in timeout? That's funny. Nope, that, that was mute. Properties. No. Settings. I know it's in here somewhere. He's playing untamed guys? That's fine. Where's the button? Filters? Nope, not a filter. Check, check, check. Okay, I just talk softly. I guess you haven't been here too long. Um. Yeah, I guess I could just be talking louder. That's a lot of effort, though. I, uh, I know what it is. I'm talking to myself. That's why I'm talking so softly. Okay, I know there's a button for this. I just made it softer. That's bad. Oh, oh, no, no, it's this one. No. Mixer. There we go. All right. Mike is going to be 125%. Check, check, check. Oh, and the music's low. Hey, Rob's gaming table. Good to see you. Oh, cool. All right. The music's loud. All right. We're learning. We're learning things today. Now the music's actually softer. I should turn it up in my speaker so I can hear it. All right. What did he do? He played a bunch of untamed dorks and kept succubusing me. I don't care. I think I still just walk at him with my disc board. I get one, two, three amber from it. He has to deal with that. We're going to get rid of his lash. Yeah. Don't fight the niffle apes. That's a mistake. They have a queen. Yeah, I think we just have to reap a bunch. Reap. 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 Now we're at six. Now we can put the sting away. Yeah, we don't want to play the sting, so we'll put it away. We'll use that. And then we Screaming Cave? Uh, do we Screaming Cave? I don't know what this card does. I don't know the impact of this card, so we're going to do it. I don't know what that did for the board, but I'm excited to find out. All right, I hope, I hope that's a little better. Is that a little better? Okay. Okay, we turn the music down. That's feeling a little lower now. We have the mic up. Okay, these levels look a little better. From what I know about this, these levels look better. It's hard because I don't have like a monitor or anything. I don't actually know what my output feels like to the viewers. But hey, I think we're doing fine here. This game's going well. We lost two Amber. We lost bait and switch. Oh, that's too bad. Bait for two whispers. 
Okay. That's fine. Cool. Thank you guys for the input. See, this is this is why I need just a, a, a small audience, just so I know what everything sounds like, just so I have the input. Okay. Oh, look, we read your eyes. That feels bad. Um, he has nothing to get off of Nexus, so I just do more dis things. Don't take my archive. Reap. Bounce your mean guy. Reap. Reap. Bounce Niffleape. Reap. Library. We put away Silent Dagger. Put a bunch of uh, Shadows cards in here. Don't play the Sting. Action. Flaxia? Got rid of Flaxia. Must have drawn it. Okay. Um, well, Screaming Cave. Ah, GG. Oh, he left. Okay. So I hope I hope the middle half of that stream, like two of those games were on the same audio settings, but now it feels a little better. I think. I don't know. Turn this down. Check, check, check. Check, check. Mm. No, that game was fine. Check. Okay. Um, let's do at least one more game. No, we'll do another two games or something. So what did we learn that game? I guess I shouldn't have closed that right away. Um, in his deck, I wasn't paying attention for the bait and switch. I remember looking at this and getting bored. And looking at the bottom half of the list, and I didn't even notice the bait and switch, but it was kind of right. He never had any value. He didn't even get any amber. He had the succubus and the toxin and the shafels, but no way to protect them. And I was able to just bounce them or kill them. I fought into shafels with my nexus. Because that was what I expected I would have to do, and it worked. He had the bobble, and I'm like, oh, I don't want him to have the bobble, but I bounced it and just made him lose all that value. Going back to my deck, this uh, this one from Kira Mode, Banefully Brass Hun. Again, Snudge is the MVP. Having two of them means you find them, and then you get the value out of them. And the shadow selves really made the board stick around. I had a couple turns where I was just ripping with a bunch of disc guys, a bunch of turns for shadow guys, and Brobno was out of place. This Brobno list has value, but isn't getting me as much as I want in like a tier 1 strong deck. I think tier 1.5 is a good spot to put this deck. Let's play one more game with it. All right. <clears throat> Good game, though. I always get suspicious when I I see these foreign deck names. I go, is this a person overseas playing? Or is this a person who saw this deck on eBay, bought it because it had some crazy composition, and wanted to do something with it? This seemed like a legitimate foreign person playing. I say that because the deck wasn't exquisite. I, I'm not in love with that deck. Um, speaking of overseas players, I'm realizing this game is actually going very well internationally, which I'm very happy about. I think FFG is doing a good job promoting it. I think they're doing a decent job distributing it. I know that they're going to have a ton of trouble every time a new set comes out. It's always going to be out of stock, always on the shelves, not on the shelves, and people are going to be upset about that. But... I'm excited to play more. I don't want to talk too much about the next cycle because I've had a lot of, I've had experience designing cards for Star Wars and I'm really not the best designer. I'm a much better analyzer and play tester. To be a designer really involves an understanding of the game as well as ingenuity. When I design cards, it's what if I had an effect that pushed the envelope a little bit and I don't design cards that are ridiculous. I would design Urchin. I would design uh, Flaxia to gain two amber when you meet this condition. I wouldn't design Arise. I wouldn't design Screaming Cave. Um, these cards that do these wacky things. I wouldn't design Neutron Shark to put the kill and kill on a, on a body. What I think is going to... But that aside, what I think is going to happen for the next cycle... I think they're going to very clearly nerf a lot of cards. I think they're going to take a lot of the cards that they made a little too strong out of the game. I think they're going to take out... My, my, my best example of this is, is I would bet that they take out Squawker and they put in... 
they keep soft landing because soft landing is the right value version of that card it's synergistic with the faction i think it's uh it should have an amber but it doesn't but it's fine they'll they'll keep it as a weak card i think that's the thing what they're not going to do is not going to keep squawker that card is over designed it's over overly powerful i'm just refreshing my focus of the camera okay there we go I think they're going to make the game a ton more board state matter. They're going to slow down a lot of the amber control and amber generation and efficiency plays and make board state things matter. Fighting is going to be better. Okay, back to this. Less speculation, more games. Poltergeist. That's going to be really annoying because I have a lot of very valuable Brobnar artifact, uh, um, artifacts. I guess the Sting is fine to play, but the rest of them don't play. Play Library of the Dam. That's fine. Don't play thing. Um, Schuler's. I guess that's fine. No punishments for big amber. Like huge amber plays. Yeah, I really don't want to lose my, my guys to the double poltergeist, but I really just have to play into it. I guess. Vault Keeper. Oh, I think it's such a good card. This should be an uncommon. This should be a common. That's just a cool card. Good stats. Like correct stats. Untamed, Fertility Chant, Key Charge, Fog Bank. Excuse me. Um, uh, is he going to race me? He might race me. He has a Murmook. Not a lot of Amber Control. All right, I'm ready. Again, just Cursory. I just don't think he has a lot of Amber Control. A little bit of no patience. Fandango, one, two, three. Okay. What do we got? I don't like this turn one, but I guess it's fine. You know what we're going to do? We're going to play this Gauntlet first. We're going to play Gauntlet, and then we can go turn two Troll Tremor. Just take his guys with the Gauntlet. We're also going to play Gauntlet to bait out the early Poltergeist. I want him to waste Poltergeist on that instead of the good ones. I guess I have a lot of amber, a, a lot of really good artifacts in Brobnar, but he can only take two of them. But I don't want him to get value out of them. So playing it early when I have less good board gets me better value. Am I right about any of this? Maybe? I don't know. Playing Dis is a better turn two play, I think. Collar, I obviously, obviously want to play. Like, playing Pit Demon turn one is no value because the, the chances that he makes an amber turn one is low so i'd much rather play either troll to threaten a guy or gauntlet to secretly threaten a guy don't play arise don't play last turn one because it doesn't get you anything it's a it's a card that's good for the mid game but not for the early game check mic levels check 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 yeah this seems fine um i hope it's not overdone he left Oh, I took too long. Impatient. That's too bad. I was excited about that. I think I, I thought I had good comments about the uh, the turn one with that hand. Oh well. Goodbye. Your deck was weird anyway. I think this 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 matchup is. I make eighteen amber and win. Maybe twenty one amber with if he keeps his marmook. Charette, Pit Demon, Schuler. You know, maybe he had more Amber Control than I gave him credit for, but really it's not all that much. Couldn't wait. Couldn't, couldn't wait. Too bad. What was I saying about the other set? Okay, yeah. Um, I think the design focus of the of the next set is going to be all board state based. I've seen a lot of these cards. I think a good example of this is the Mars guy that says each neighbor gives the opponent plus two amber cost. That's really cool. That means I have a reward for keeping a board and not necessarily a Mars board, which I think they're also going to stray away from. I think they're going to reward you for keeping boards. There's also a Mars guy who likes to reap for double only if he has two neighbors. Not two Mars neighbors, just two neighbors. It means you have to have a board. And you get more value in the game as a whole. 
is also a succubus card they're going to rotate succubus out and they're going to lead this guy in and she says i'm a succubus when you have two neighbors that is a much more interesting card than succubus succubus is a strong card probably too strong and the right way to balance it is to give it a condition and two neighbors as a condition is a cool way to make the board have value which is what they're trying to do with the the set what i think they're trying to do with the set double library All right we got to give them the high let's not lose this guy to impatience good houses fear and gongoozle is removal look at the hysteria lose your board hysteria lose more things to poltergeist amber control amber control very good dis house excuse me good support dis Fagin and Urchin. We're going to lose a lot of Amber this game. Double too much to protect. Did I play this guy the other day? Ugh. Do triple Mega Mouth. Okay, we're going to lose this game. We're going to He has a lot of efficiency plays. He has a lot of a lot of Amber steel. Bait and switch double too much to protect. Ugh, good luck. Oh man. Okay, what do I do? Um, he's got the poltergeist. I have to like be careful about this screech bomb. He has one poltergeist. Um, I don't want to do turn two snudge, so I guess we go turn one troll. Okay, sure. There's one tool gone. Fear. Getting wrecked. Okay, this is fine. Um, make as many value plays as possible. Okay. Tremor, get your guy. Screech Bomb. Worthless to you now. I don't have any amber for you to steal. Tremor should have a dot? I don't know. It, it's kind of like Phosphorus Stars. I think they balanced this card with Phosphorus Stars and they said Phosphorus Stars gets a bunch of... Oh, boy. Okay, we're gonna stop chatting. Okay. Okay. So here's what's just interesting about that play. There's no protection, and there's no one to use them with. I have at least two turns before these guys are actually scary. So, we're going to play as many cards as we can. We're going to play Shadow Self. We will play Ghostly Hand for nothing. We'll play Silver Tooth for the Amber. Maybe we re would just use Screech Bomb? No, we're going to use this as soon as we can. And we're going to get rid of not Shuler. Mm. Maybe Tunk? Yeah, we're going to get rid of Tunk. And the reason I do this is I want, I want to keep these guys around to kill them. I want these guys to go away. Yeah, yeah. Now we're going to go Brobnar. We're, go we're going to hope he makes two Amber. Because if this guy uses Shuler right now, then he's exhausted and this guy can't use Shuler effectively. We are going to get around the triple Mega Mouths all at once. Yeah, look. There's the Poltergeist. Now I'm free and clear at least. <laughs> it's too bad. All right. We have to fight him now. Oh, I could collar. Oh, no, no, no. We're not fighting. No, we are stealing. Oh, this is going to be mean. All right, we played this. Look at our discard. We have no creatures. We're going to get rid of Arise. Discard Arise. Collar. You're Snudge. Now you're in trouble, huh? On the right. Play you on the right. Now you can't play enhancements or uh, uh, artifacts, I guess. Reap here, get rid of your Mega Mouth. Now you're holding three Mars guys. One of them is Tunk. I still want to punch your other Mega Mouth, but. Oh. 
Now we have Earthshaker to put Silver Tooth and keep Shadow Self next to the Snudges. Okay, this is how we win this game. We draw really well. I don't think we can play the Sting though. I don't think we're allowed to play the Sting. Because he has double too much to protect and bait. There's Tonk. There's the Shuler that was exhausted. No, he wasn't exhausted. He's gonna fight? My Snudge, that's fine. Too bad, okay. I think we get value. I think we just wipe as much of his board as we can. We play the Earthshaker on the right. We punch the Shuler. I think we fight Tunk because Charret isn't as scary. What is his board? What does his deck composition look like? Was there a lot of Mars guys? He just had a lot of cards, but I got rid of three Mars guys, so Tunk is less valuable now. Let's sound the horns because there's one more guy in here. Kill most of our deck. Kill. Okay, just kill a Silent Dagger. That's fine. We play Bumpsy on the right. You lose an Amber. I think I want to fight with you. Fighting Charette puts him in bait and switch mode. Fine. I want to get rid of bait and switch. I want him to play it. I want to be done with it. I don't want to deal with it. Okay. We are we are ahead. But I think his deck has too many tools for the mid to late game that we're not going to be able to win. Or we have to continue playing really clean. Like this Tentacus has to get us a lot of value. Use an artifact. That's not play an artifact. Okay. Fights Shadow Self. Good play. Squawker fights Snudge. Better play. That's it? Oh. Wow. Good thing I killed all the Mega Mounts. Oh, look at my Brobnar turn. It's just value. Okay. We get Brobnar today. We... So watch. Value plays. Fight here first. Now we Anger on the Troll. Now we Reap with the Troll to get the Amber and the Heal. We play Gauntlet, and do I reap with Earthshaker Bumpsy? He is almost certainly holding all of the cards that steal. I am going to try to end my turn here. We're going to say you have to have too much to protect in an Urchin, because I think he even has Fagin. Yeah, we are going to do the value plays... He hasn't played much shadows. Show me the things that I don't want to see. What's going on here? Why is Facebook telling me things are going on? Okay. Pawn Sacrifice for Dodger to do damage. What are you doing? Nerve Blast. Kill my... Troll? I forged? Okay, I forged. Okay, we forged once. It is possible. What a weird hand. Having four Shadow Cards and there's still three big steel effects that he didn't play. Seeker Needle is going to be an interesting card this matchup because I hope I keep the Tentacus on the board. Okay, we're going to put all these guys on the right side in some order, in descending order of how much I care about them. Because if I draw a Shadow Self, I want to keep this Tentacus alive. I want to make him look valuable. Um, but really, the guy I care about is the Snudge. So I want him to kill Charette because his job is just to kind of hold Amber. Um, he's not actually stopping anything right now. 
Pitima has 5 health, I care about him even less. Toxin has 3 health, so he's the second squishiest, but Snudge is the most valuable, so that's why I put him all the way on the side. This ordering is only for... It's only for the, the, the thing, the Shadow Self. But what is this turn? What is this lack of efficiency I'm seeing? It hurts my eyes. Okay, we could reap for four. Reap three, steal one, bounce Seeker Needle. Or play Gauntlet Obelisk, reap one, two, three. I think the stealing is better. Remember kids, stealing is better. Reap. What is in his hand? We're going to bump the, the altar because I want him to use the secret needle and I don't want him to play. Yeah, we're going to bump the altar even though it has an amber. There's reasons for that that are probably wrong. Um, but I want to tempt him to use the secret needle to give me tentacus and like maybe he forgets the tentacus Mars Okay, I guess either work Let's keep let's keep declaring this stealing his amber and bumping his guys right That one this one might maybe should have been Brobnar. This one was a little bit greedy. Uh, this might have been a smarter Brobnar turn. But the incremental value here is huge. Bumping. Tunk. Mother gun. Because I don't want him to kill Tentacus. Whatever happens, I don't want Tentacus to die. I think bumping. I think he's going to have to play a steel card this turn. He's going to play uh, Shadows. So getting Tentacus. Room to breathe is good. Bounce mother gun. I don't know what my instincts say there. My instincts say to play Brobner there. That was that was a misplay turn. I mean, minor, minor stuff, but I think I think these are the things that matter in games that are this close. Because reaping for fewer amber there is actually better. And fighting it with the Earthshaker is actually better. Okay. Get Tentacus. Get Tentacus. Oh, did he have a thing on that? He has Biomatrix backup. I didn't see that. Okay, I think I'm supposed to bounce. I'm, I'm supposed to bounce Tunk there. I guess fighting Tunk doesn't do as much. Bait for four. I'm still at six. Fagin for no urchins. Urchins in this card. No urchins. What's he sorry about? Oh look, he used Seeker Needle. All right, we'll give it to him. It's five to six. No sneaky things. But like, this is the, the little things that I was talking about. You got to make sure that, that uh, you give him the opportunity to mess up. If this was a real match or something and he had like done the ping. Oh, I guess. <sighs> 
Okay, so 2 and 9, there's 11 amber in the game. You should be at 6. Because after playing these two cards, nothing actually changes. The amber in the game doesn't change. All right. What do we do now? Do we go dis again and steal <laughs> reap bounce? Uh, I think I've got to go Brobnar. Huh. Yeah, I want to draw more cards. These cards aren't helping me as much as I need them to. Oh, oh, no, we can go Shadows and steal. Like, if we steal his 6 Amber with the Sting, then we have to go Shadows again? And undo it? So if you're watching this, D Il Daltonico, I only looked at your deck in the beginning, right? I'll remind people. Okay, what am I trying to do here? Earthshaker fights really nicely into Tunk. And then Obelisk goes, oh yeah. Okay, here's what we're doing. Earthshaker fights really nicely into Tunk and gets damage on himself. Bumpsy fights really nicely into Fagin. And then Gauntlet lets... Oh, I guess Snudge should have fought first and then Bumpsy to bounce a needle. This is fine, though. Because we don't want him to have Fagin. Yeah, that could have been slightly more efficient with Snudge first and then Bumpsy. And then Snudge ends up with no damage, and all this is the same except he loses a card. But we still get to 6, which is a, an important number. Because he has only... Um, he doesn't have the right tools to get me off of 6. Okay. Grab a Jammer. Grab a Jammer gets me off of 6. Get your Archive. Get your Tunk back. Okay. Yep, grab a jammer. Okay. But now we are in a better spot. Now we want to play Shadows and put Shadow Self on the left to protect the Toxin. We want to get you to protect under the Shadow Self. Take your Amber, get me to seven. Miasma is a cool card. I don't need it, so I want to play it. Play you on the left. So the reason I go shadows here, um, um, okay. So the reason to go shadows here, discard this, um, instead of staying dis, is because I had five shadows in my hand. Um, I don't want to use my javelin. I had five shadows in my hand. I wanted to draw more cards, but that's simple. Um, I wanted to get more value out of Tentacus. The biggest reason I did shadows was to play the shadow self under the Tentacus. Um, his board is very strong 
um, artifact-wise. And if he wants to fight Tentacus uh, a bunch of times, that's fine with me. Look, fight Snudge, that's fine. Um, I'm getting my... I'm getting to 7 under the Grabber Jammer. Um, I actually got to 8 under the Grabber Jammer. So if he plays Mars there, he can't actually stop me forging. If he plays Shadows there then I get double value out of Seeker Needle or I nullify both of his Seeker Needles and he still hasn't forged. All of that feels really good to me, especially sitting on this Earthshaker and this Bumpsy and this Tentacus so heavily damaged. Protecting Tentacus nullifies his Seeker Needles and his Mother Gun. Look, he didn't even use Mother Gun. To him, it looks like uh, Dis is the, is the scariest, but having the five other cards in my hand is a big influence. All right, now I get to use his Secret Needle or his Mother Gun. Or steal his Crabber Jammer. That feels cool. Reap for three, steal one. Oh, good game. Wow. <sighs> yeah, but seven cards down. I don't think I don't think it was in the bottom of the deck. I think I just beat you. Um I think your deck had a lot of tools, but not dealing with the Tentacus actually put you very behind. Also Snudge MVP again. Alright, let's look, look take a look at this guy's deck because it's still terrifying. A single hysteria there wrecks all of my hard work. Puts everything back in my hand. Totally turns off my plan. Double Seeker Needle and the Mother Gun got turned off. But both Library of the Damned were still in his deck or maybe in his hand. He had to go too much to protect in the bottom of the deck. Um, I really had uh, a, a game that was all about just taking away his incremental advantages. Um, or rather gaining my own incremental advantages, really taking away his things on the turn he wanted to use them. Focus. Okay. Um, yeah, I think that was a clinic in using a deck's tools effectively. Um, and there were also a lot of turns there where I thought that, you know, I could have played something a little bit smarter. But there was that turn where having not fought with Earthshaker and Bumpsy earlier and doing that extra diss turn... Um, although I put Tentacus at more of a risk uh, by having him a, a get damaged, um, and I think I yeah he's the one no he's the one who fought into uh, the other guy. But I got to use the Iron Obelisk to stop him from forging when it mattered. I was always playing in such a way that I was excuse me conscious of his tools, his artifact tools, his bait and switch tools. I think the only thing I was really overlooking was the Hysteria. I totally forgot about this tool he had. Um, but things like getting rid of all three Mega Mounts early was huge. I think the, I think I had a ton of efficiency plays where I put cards back in his hands with Snudge. Look at this. I had one card in my discard. That's probably because I drew through my deck, which a little silly to talk about, but it means I used all my tools. I had my last tools in my hand. This was an int yeah, I used these cards. Oh, no, I didn't, didn't I? I used the sting. I didn't have the other shadow self. No, I punched things, I screech bombed. He screech bombed me, okay, yeah, we shuffled through the deck. Um, okay, don't worry about that. Um, yeah, I was like, I was on this game. I was very on, I was trying to think as hard as I could about what was in his deck as much as I could remember. I was really trying to deal with his cards as they came out. I was really happy with that game. Uh, I think that's a good place to end it on a really high note. Um, I don't keep track of records of wins and losses as far as these games go because uh, I'm not here to I'm not here to win every game. I'm here to learn every game. I'm here to apply skills every game, and I'm also here to make good content. I want people to have a good view of how a game looks from my side, how I think about things, how efficiency plays could be better, how hindsight 
in hindsight, I could have done that better. I could have done this better. And this time I used the uh, Banefully Brass Han the entire game. And wow, uh, Kirma was right. This gave me a lot of really interesting interactions. There were a lot of really cool plays that this deck had that I didn't see at at the start. A lot of efficiency plans with Gauntlet. Um, the Brobnar guys are very survivable because there are all these disc guys that are more important to kill. And because of that, they have they have to spend their time killing my Snudges and my Toxins. And so the Bumpsy and the Earthshaker and the Troll actually get to hold damage and the Iron Obelisk gets to take advantage of that. That is not just a coincidence, that is a real synergy that is harder to see. These guys not having actual protection, or rather being protected under their Shadow Self, takes all the pressure off of these less efficient plays. And it makes these off turns feel a lot better. One thing that we, that didn't happen is we didn't play against a hard board wipe. We didn't play against against a key to diss or a gateway to diss. We played against a poison wave. There was a hysteria, two hysterias. One of them we toxined, the other one we didn't see in this game. But both of those would have been very hard for this deck to deal with. Um, just because we have a rise doesn't mean it's a full way to recover with this deck. But yeah, I was... I was much happier with the effectiveness of this deck than I thought. All the guys felt kind of big, kind of bulky, very efficient. Snudge MVP, man. Let me tell you, what a good card. What a great... Oof, they should rotate that. That's too good. Um, they shouldn't be able to bounce artifacts. I think flank creature is an interesting distinction, but artifacts is just too strong. They're already slow and don't get you amber most of the time as it is. That's rough. Maybe exhaust an artifact or bounce a flank creature, but that's too much. Um, Screaming Cave? I'm not a fan of. I don't think it does anything. There are probably decks that's cool, but I didn't, I didn't love it. Um, anyway, yeah. Thank you all for tuning in. I hope this was all right. I hope the music thing goes well. I hope, uh, I, hope I get the copyright stuff all right soon. And uh, thanks all for tuning in. See you next time.